Hagen. And I thank God that he was watching all the way. The bar down there. The bar is still there. It's being a different name. And uh, there on New Year's Eve doing the things you do. And I walked into the bathroom and looking in the mirror. And it was well into the evening. I can't remember what time it was. But as I looked in the mirror, I, I hit it. I punched the mirror. I cut my hand open pretty good. I didn't even realize it went so back down. And, Bartender's like, what did you do to your hand? And then he walked in and was like, wow, you busted, you know. The only thing I can figure out after I sold it the of it is that I didn't really like what I was seeing in the mirror. Yeah. You know, I knew that God had called me to serve him. Mm -hmm. So he's called all of us to do something. He's called all of us into the, the kingdom. He wants all of us to be working for him. But I kind of got away from that. At this time, if the young people want to go downstairs, if they were going down, I think, I think Steve's taking them down so when, when they're ready. But uh, I, 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 I got a feeling I didn't like what I seen in the mirror because I knew I was supposed to be doing something else. And yet I was bound by the things of this world. And at the time, I kind of enjoyed some of them things, you know? I remember as a kid, you know, preachers saying how terrible everything was, but for the flesh, there was a little enjoyment. But the price that I paid and still continue to pay for some of those good times has been pretty high. You know, I remember punching the mirror, punching other stuff, you know, just stupidity. But that's what you, you know, when you're in a mindset that the enemy puts you in, there's, you know, not much you can do. But some of the arthritis and all that good stuff going on probably because of my foolishness. But I thank God that in his loving, tender mercies, continued to call me. The those that were praying for me continued to call me. And there were nights that all I could do was say, Lord, help me. You know, help me. I couldn't I could pray anything else but help me. And I thank God that he did. He finally brought me to that point where I knew I had to get back to doing what he wanted me to do. You know, that story continues because my buddy had became a uh, Towards the mark 
the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. You know, Paul's saying, I'm not thinking about the things in the past. You know, first off, he says, you know, I have not apprehended. I haven't quite made it yet. I'm not quite there yet. I'm still working on getting to where God wants me to be. You know, when we look at the life of the Apostle Paul and Peter, you know, it's like, man, if I could only have their faith, if I could only have what they had. But even they are saying, you know, did Paul say, when, you know, the things I want to do, I don't do, and the things I don't want to do, I end up doing? So he had the exact same struggles, trials, and situations that we do. Do you find yourself doing the things that you don't want to do? Yeah. And not the things, you know, vice versa? Yeah. I mean, he had the same struggles and problems, and yet he, by the power of God, made it through some of them. You know, it's going to take the power of God to help us get over those situations. You know, and if he did it, we can do it because we know God is not the respected person. What he's done for one, he'll do for the other. And he says, I haven't made it yet. I'm not quite there yet. I'm still working. I'm getting to be what God wants me to be. You know, the author and finisher of my faith, the one that started the work, he's going to be faithful and finished. He says, forgetting those things that are behind me. You know, when I look back in my life and I think of the situation on that New Year's Eve, and I think of other situations, other, other times in my life, it's like, wow, you know, I really messed up. I really messed up at times in my life. You know, and I think we can all sit down and say, man, what was I thinking? Well, we weren't. We were letting the enemy, you know, rule our lives. I was, I was ruled for years by my next high, my next drunk, my next whatever it was. Just that next good time. And I was just looking for that. And my whole life revolved around that. And if I could focus in my Christian walk to have the same commitment to Christ that I did to those things, because sometimes we slack off a little bit. Sometimes we let down our guard. You know, I mean, my whole life was, I worked a second job just so I could buy my stuff to keep hot. You know, I, I, I mean, I worked to keep that going. I was always looking for it. But do we look for the next fix in Christ? Lord, where's my next blessing? Where's the next place I can help somebody? Where's the next place that I can go and be a light and a witness to someone? You know, where's that effort that I used to put into? And I don't know if this is for all you or more for me, but I think many times, you know, it's for all of us because I walk through situations that you walk through. I struggle with the things that you struggle with. You know, and there's times in our life if we're not careful, we start to let down our guard. But I think the new year is the perfect time to think back on those things. You know, there's times in my, my past that I've messed up. But Lord, help me to use those failures to do better in the future. Help me to learn from those failures. You know, if you keep doing the same thing and keep getting the same results, you know, at some point you got to change things up, right? Is that what they say? Let's maybe if there's something you're struggling with in your life, let's change things up so that we can overcome it. Looking behind us, when I look back, man, there's things that I, I wouldn't forget. There's things that I wish I could erase. I wish there was things I could delete. But I can't. And you know what? When Jesus died on that cross, when that blood was shed, I said, Lord, forgive me for those sins. Forgive me for those stupid mistakes. Forgive me for the things that I've done and I've failed you. It's forgotten. He forgets it. It's gone. If we could just get our forgetter to work that good. There's times I'm thankful that I remember some of those things because then it keeps me from many times wanting to do them again. You know, when I think all the mess that I was in and the lies that brought me to that point, oh, you know, a little drink ain't going to hurt, a little this ain't going to hurt, a little that, you know, and then all of a sudden I'm in a situation. If I remember those things, when the devil comes and says, hey, what about doing this? What about doing this? What about going there? I'm going to remember. You know, the people, all of a sudden, they started remembering Egypt. You know, we didn't have it that bad, did we? We had some leaks in garlic seed. They were, they were looking... They were missing the point. What about the people that were beating you to death? That you were working yourselves to death? That you were slaves and you were under them taskmasters? You know, if you look back, you might s see some good times. And I know that even as us as Christians, sometimes we found ourselves in adult fellowships talking about the past. You know, and almost reveling in it and saying, man, I remember when I, 
But if we're not careful, we're bringing up just the good things, if there were any good things, you know, in the past. But what about the price that we paid? What about the price that we paid for those fleshly good times? Not worth it. Not worth it. So whatever it is you've done in your past, leave it there. God has forgiven you, God has forgotten about it, and he's put it under the blood. And the devil's going to bring it up, he's going to bring it back up, he's going to bring it back up. But when, you know, the saying goes, when he reminds you of your past, let him know about his future. Yeah. One day, Satan, you're going to be put in a change, you're going to be thrown in that lot of bed, because the blood of Jesus Christ has already won the battle. Reaching forward, and then the other things which are before. What do you have before you? You know, as we look today, you know, we got the past behind us, you know, what do we have looking forward to us today? What are you looking forward to this year? Mm -hmm. You know, when I look over the past year, I look at a foot that's been, you know, on the outside, it's like hamburger, and on the inside, it's like determining. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been sitting in a chair for almost six months over the last year. I've been hobbling around like crazy. In the next year, I'm looking forward to being able to walk without pain. I'm looking able to be forward. I don't want to say the word run because I don't think I'll ever quite run again. Maybe a quick walk, maybe a jog. But, you know, I want to be able to be moving without pain. You know, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to being able to go on the campground and jump on a board without my wife yelling at me, saying, you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to do the things that I need to be able to do without, you know, me too. that situation. That's just in the physical. What about in the spiritual? What are you all looking at in the spiritual? You know, what about the failures that we've had in the past? As we look forward, what do we want to do for the Lord this year? You know, as it gets darker out there, as it gets more evil out there, the light should be shining brighter out of these windows. Amen. We should be making more of a difference out in the marketplace. On our jobs, schools, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, there should be a light that's shining. Like I said last week it was, we were up at Penny's doing a little Christmas browsing, just walking around, and all of a sudden we started talking with one of the sales clerks. She was a Christian. They've been through some hard times, you know, cancer in the family, death, all these bad things happening. But in Jesus Christ, we can look for the good things in life. We can look for the good things coming up this year. We can look to be a blessing in somebody's life this year. Moving forward to that call, I press towards the mark of Jesus Christ. We forgot um, my sermon notebook this morning, so I'm trying to do it. I, I've been emailing myself all my sermons, so at least you got a backup plan. Okay, where were we? So the past, we need to leave be the past. I'm going to encourage you for the second one is to give up any grudges, any, any bitterness. You know, forgive is basically what it's about. You know, over the year have you been hurt by somebody? And something happened is you've allowed it to build up because sometimes the littlest thing that can happen, if you don't get rid of that, it'll build up, it'll grow. That little, that little hurt will grow into bitterness and then it'll grow into hate. And then all of a sudden we're seeking revenge. You know, and many times if we're not careful, we've got this thing going against somebody, and we just we're dwelling on the situation, and they may not even know that they hurt us. You know, it's over to them. You know, I mean, it's it's not even in their wheelhouse. But people we're making this huge mountain out of this. But if there's anything in your heart that you know against anybody or somebody's hurt you, work that out. We need to get things right in our life. I've heard people say, I can never forgive that person for what they've done. You know what that statement does? If that's a true statement being said, Jesus says, if you don't forgive others, I cannot forgive you. Amen. Uh, I mean, that's where it is. We need to forgive. We need to forgive people when they hurt us. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times it's those little, you know, now, we've been married 29 years. And there's been some hurts there. You know, I haven't been the perfect husband. No. 
hurt. Okay? Mm. But you know, and there's sometimes there's hurts there. But you know what? We forgive. You know, you look towards those good things that you have, and you move yeah. forward. You try to build on those good things. You know, yeah. if the toilet paper roll goes this way instead of that way, or the, the toothpaste cap is laying here instead of there, although I always put it out, you know. I mean, you know, some of the little things that people get all swirling yeah. about sometimes, you know, yeah. whatever it may be. You know, there's a certain way Kathy likes things. And I try to most of the time do them that way, but not always. Sometimes I'm going to do them the way I'm going to do them. And she's still trying to train me. Okay? I might be in trouble at the church, so I better, I better move on. Forgiveness is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Love. You know, when you love somebody, those little things, you're going to overlook. Not really overlook that you're going to live with. Not that Christ overlooks sin, but when we, you know, deal with one another, we're all individuals. If I can't always get along with Kathy, then Kathy can't always get along with me. You know what I'm talking about? It's not like we're the half fields of the boys when we just disagree on certain situations. How is it that all of us are always going to get along? I've seen feuds in the church over the color of the carpet, Amen. over the color of the walls, over like, just stuff that doesn't really matter. You think the guy sitting over at the bar that's lost his family, that's lost his job, that's you know doesn't know what to do? You think he cares what color his carpet is? He wants to know there's some better way of life, something that's going to help him through every day, give him a reason to get out of bed, give him a reason just to get up in the morning. It's not going to be the color of the carpet. It's going to be the love that we show, the forgiveness that we show to one another. So we need to work to forgive. So if there's anything in your heart towards anybody, and a lot of times, I mean, the Bible says if you know your brother's done something wrong, you go and you say, hey, I've had to do that before. And I, I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, I don't think I've done anything wrong. But just to make sure. Sometimes it's just opening that door. Sometimes it's just giving that bridge for them to say, oh, man. I've went to people and I've said, if there's anything I've said or done, please forgive me. And we'll talk later. Amen. Or I'm not going to do it or whatever it is. you know. And then it's, at least my hands are clean. But forgive because that, that unforgiveness will grow and it will destroy. And it won't really destroy another person. It will destroy you. Yes. It'll destroy you. So get rid of them grudges. Let that forgiveness. You know, Job 21. And Job 21 talks about people that have no happiness. There's just bitterness in their hearts. I mean, have you ever met somebody that just all the time they're just grumpy and grouchy and you know when I different situations at work and different things over my life. There's some people that are just. Ah, humbug, Mr. Scrooge, you know, I mean, just completely, but that's where the love of Jesus Christ. Remember Mr. Scrooge at the end of the three dreams, the dreams and all of that, you know, he was a happy, his cheerful guy, ready to forgive, ready to help, ready to give, you know, well, that's what Jesus Christ will do to you. Commit yourself to restore your relationships. We need to restore, and that's, Part of forgiveness goes with that, but making solid relationships with people. Yeah. Remember years ago, you had a computer, and whenever you turn it on, there'd be a little thing pop up, you know, want to run a check on your computer, want to run a scan. Nowadays, we've got Norton and all these other McAfee, and, you know, they kind of work behind the scenes, but, you know, they're there protecting the computer. But I still have my Bible program. Every time I go to close it, there's a little pop-up window that comes up. So you sure want to sure you want to do this? You know, and it's kind of warning me. You know, you want to do this, you want to do that. It's kind of warning me. But the Lord does that to us too. He warns us. He gives us, you know, in, in Romans 12 and 18, it says, Let it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men. Have you found in your life there's some people that you just can't always live peaceably with? You know, there's been times in my life where there's people I just, you, I want everybody to like me. You know, I, I think we all want that. 
And there's some people, no matter what you do, they're just not going to like you. You know, we got a couple of neighbors that are just, and some of you have met them. You know, I mean, some of you know how crazy some of our neighbors are. Out there taking pictures because they're worried the snow is going to blow over onto their driveway when we're snowballing. You know, out there yelling at Kathy because when she's mowing the grass, he thinks the grass is coming over on his driveway. You know, just, just, just crazy stuff. And I've learned that I can't hardly get along with that guy. And when he comes and starts cussing at me and yelling at me, I tell him, call the landlord and have him call me. You know, have your landlord call me if you got a situation. If you think I parked too close to your driveway, he's the guy that's saying, your renter shouldn't be parking there. They should be parking in the garage. That's their parking space. I tried to get along with the guy. Our neighbors next door, some of you have dealt with them. You know, our plow guy has dealt with them. They're out there cussing out the plow guy. <laughs> it's like, that's our property. Well, we can't open our gate up. Your gate opens into our parking lot. Do the math. You're driving, you know. So there's some people, no matter what you do, it's just almost impossible to get along with them. But we have to try. We have to try to restore relationships. A couple of weeks ago, Dean, my neighbor, come walking over. He goes, hey, can you move your car? Because he wanted to get his car in between the garage for winter. We park cars in between the garages and leave them back there. And he's like, that's the, that's the first time he spoke to me civil in like two years. I'm like, yeah, no problem. You know, you know. So, you know, sometimes it's just that little seed that restores that relationship. And I'm being cautious. I'm moving slow with it. Because sometimes I don't know if he's off his medication and he's going to fall <laughs> out or what. But uh, restore them relationships. Try to get along with everybody. And not only does that go for those out there, but in the church. Have you ever had somebody in the church that you just can't get along with? I don't think I've ever had that situation, but I've heard of people that have. You know, and that should be happening because we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, but we store them relationships. Commit yourself to turn back on your transgressions and your sins. Romans 6 and 2 says, God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You know, the Holy Spirit gives us the power to overcome sin. When we, when we kneel down and we say, Lord, forgive me my sins, save me, cleanse me, make me right before you, there should be something within us that doesn't desire to do those things in this world. You know, when, I, when, when God saved me, when he delivered me from all of those things, he did a good job of it. You know, I, I didn't have the desire to drink or smoke or do, you know, not that I smoke cigarettes, but to do all that kind of stuff. I didn't have that desire anymore. He took it away. And when the enemy would come and, and kind of mess with me, say, man, you know, there was one time I was coming home from a meeting at the church or whatever, and I had the suit on, and I, you know, looking pretty good, you know, I thought at least. You know, and the devil's like, man, you should stop there at that one bar because you're looking good. You know, I, you know, driving a nice car now, and, you know, that's the way the devil works, so doesn't he? You know, man, you can go in there and you'd be all that in a bag of chips. But it's like, devil, you're a liar, man. The only reason I'm standing in this suit, the only reason I'm driving this car is because I got away from that mess. Because when I was in that mess, my car was wrapped around trees, wrapped around other cars. I was sitting in jail. I didn't have no money. And he was just lying to me. And yet, there's something within a person that many times, if we're not careful, if we don't feed ourselves with the things of God, It'll draw us back in. Doesn't the Bible say like a dog towards vomit? Yes. You know, have you? I, you know, over the years I got saved and kind of fell away, got saved and fell away a couple, two, three times. But there's times you see people constantly, over and over and over. We need to get right with God and we need to serve Him. We need to do the right thing. We need to commit to Him. We need to put that sin where it belongs in that place. We need to say, Lord, this is it. I'm serving you. You know, I thank God that after I came back that last time, I was like, okay, this is it. I knew that if I didn't get my life right then, I, I believe I would have been dead or in prison right now. Because
because the way my life was going with the things I was involved in, the places and the people and the different situations, I'd already faced situations where I should have been dead, but God delivered me. He did. He did. He delivered me many times. I remember sitting at the movie one time and uh, <laughs> there was a friend of mine that had worked at Walgreens and he had gotten all kinds of drugs, values and all that stuff. And as I was eating my popcorn, I was yeah. taking some values, you know. Took one, I was like, I'm not feeling nothing. Took another one. I think I took 13 by the time it was all set. Wow. I think I slept for two days. Sister King said I should have been dead. Yeah. She's a nurse. She said I should have been dead. I slept for two days. I remember getting up. I still lived at home. I remember getting up. And Dad's like, what are you doing? I go, I'm getting ready for church. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you get back in that bed. I was there for about two days. I should have been dead. But I thank God that those things that are the past, even, even when we kind of put them away, like that when I kind of put away in a drawer and locked up, but that's the saving power that God has to deliver us, right. to set us free. You know, when we make those mistakes, you know, but Satan many times will bring them things back. If he can't use it to say, why would, you know, why are you think you should be a Christian? Why do you think you can do this or do that? He's going to use it to say, well, why don't you do it again? Did you have a good time? Wasn't this, wasn't that? But Satan is a liar. And once we walk away from those sinful actions, we need to serve God with our heart, all our mind, and all our soul. So, I mean, these are just four things that I want to challenge you with today. You know, get right with Jesus Christ. Stay right with Jesus Christ. You know, forgive others. Get rid of those grudges. Yeah. You know, make the right relationships. You know, I mean, I, I, I've seen situations where People have had ought against family members, brothers, sisters, moms, dads, whatever. And when something happens, they don't have that opportunity to make it right. And then there's that guilt for years that, it, it, that it's not right. So if you have that opportunity, make it right. And then turn your back on those sins. You know, the things, the failures that we had from last year, you know, whatever it is that you failed in, you know, that you think you failed in, Make this year the year that you overcome those obstacles. Make this year the year that you continue to walk with Jesus Christ with all your heart, yeah. and all your mind, and all your soul. We have the victory through Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. At this time, it's getting, we're going to do communion, and I think it's very fitting here on New Year's Day. But uh, as we get ready to think about these four points, search your heart. The Bible says if we take on more than we were. We're bringing, you know, things upon ourselves because we're not where we need to be. So let's just take a moment as...